dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, Barberville Middle School students were leaving a soccer game last night and were surprised when something struck the windshield of the bus. WYMT's Hannah Reynolds explains what that was. School officials say the turkey flew into the windshield shortly after the school bus had just left the Whitley County campus after a middle school boys soccer game. School staff say when the bus driver pulled out onto U.S. Highway 25 West, he drove about 500 yards before a turkey flew and struck the windshield. Crews repairing the bus say if the turkey had struck anywhere other than the upper middle part of the glass, it could have been dangerous for those on the bus. I was a little surprised that it did as much damage as it did uh, being this large of a vehicle. Um, it's going to take us a minute to clean up. There, there's a lot of damage. Crews that are replacing the windshield say the damage estimates at about $1,500. In Barberville, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Unfortunately, school officials say nobody was hurt except the turkey. It's been a very soggy good Friday and we're really going to see that continue as we head into the evening overnight hours and into your Saturday as well. You'll notice here on satellite and radar we are most of us are seeing a little bit of a break and you're seeing most of that rain staying to our east where the flood threat over there is a little bit higher. As we take a look now we're seeing that line starting to move into Pulaski County, McCreary County, Whitley County um, and Laurel County as well. And some of that could be a little stormy over there but overall not expecting anything severe. Let's go ahead and zoom in though on this flash flood warning. That's down into Lee and Wise County, Virginia. Now you see it's just a sliver of that area. We're seeing most of that rain get out of there, but that's until about 530 for that area. Now we are still in the warm sector, which is some good news. We're seeing those mid to upper 60s across our area, but you see where that cold air is in Richmond, Moorhead, Somerset, Monticello. You're seeing those 50s already, so cold air is on the way. That'll impact us, especially as we head into your Saturday. But compared to this time yesterday, we're definitely cooler. 15 degrees cooler has it in Jackson, almost 30 degrees cooler over into Richmond showing 27 degrees cooler in Lexington. And really, we're going to continue to see these soggy conditions, especially for the overnight hours and into your Saturday as well. Good news is sunshine does return by Easter Sunday. I'll have that full forecast for you guys in just a little bit. All right. Thank you, Paige. Nearly 45 million Americans were in the path of a deadly storm system that affected the southern plains for three days. That system is blamed for at least two deaths. The storm traveled more than 700 miles over 24 hours. It left a trail of crumpled buildings and shredded homes across Texas, including this one, which rolled from its foundation with a young couple still inside. It just kind of kept on rolling. Um, my wife was in the bathroom. It threw me into the wall and then out the window. A suspected tornado also touched down in Mississippi, which uprooted trees and flattened homes. And across Louisiana, winds also ripped trees from the ground. The severe weather continued in Florida, where one girl was killed when a tree fell on her home. The Lee County Sheriff's Office says an 8-year-old girl and a 12-year-old boy were injured when a tree fell on the home in Woodville this morning. Both children were rushed to the hospital, but the girl died from her injuries there. The Sheriff's Office says the boy suffered non-life-threatening injuries and is currently with family. Hurricane Michael was stronger than originally thought. More than six months after devastating Florida's panhandle, the hurricane was upgraded from a Category 4 to a Category 5 storm at landfall. Scientists at the National Hurricane Center said today that a post-storm analysis estimates sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. One of only four recorded Category 5 hurricanes to make landfall in the U.S., and the first Category 5 hurricane to make landfall since Hurricane Andrew way back in 1992. Hurricane Michael caused about $25 billion in damages. The California couple who kept their 13 children in a house of horrors was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. At today's sentencing, one of David and Louise Turpin's daughters testified that she was robbed of her entire life. Officials say the couple tied the children up for weeks and sometimes months at a time. The children only showered once a year and were beaten and starved. They were isolated from the outside world for years. The couple were arrested in January 2018 after one of their daughters, a 17-year-old, managed to escape and call police. 
Congress is upping the ante over the Mueller report. Today, the head of the House Judiciary Committee issued a subpoena for the full unredacted report. Meantime, the president has some choice words about the findings. CBS's Nicole Killian is on Capitol Hill, where the legal and political battles may just be beginning. Less than 24 hours after the release of a redacted version of the Mueller report, House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler issued a subpoena for the entire thing. We need the whole report, including the underlying documents, unredacted. While the 448-page report did not find evidence of coordination or conspiracy between Russia and the Trump campaign in 2016, the special counsel was less clear on the issue of obstruction, leaving the question to Congress. Indeed, he found numerous instances where the president took steps to try to derail or shut down the investigation. A select group of lawmakers is being allowed to view a less redacted version of the report starting next week. But Chairman Nadler says that's pointless and demands the Justice Department turn over all materials by the time the Attorney General testifies next month. Kicking off the holiday weekend at his Florida golf club, President Trump called the Mueller report crazy and said some of the statements about him are total BS. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. Press and Secretary Sarah Sanders also of... disputed allegations that she misled the media when she said countless members of the FBI had lost confidence in fired FBI Director James Comey. Look, I've acknowledged that I, the word countless uh, was a slip of the tongue. Republicans say the time to move on has arrived, but Nadler insists the report exposes a culture of lying at the White House and is calling on special counsel Robert Mueller to testify. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. If the Justice Department does not respond to the subpoena, Democrats could hold officials in contempt of Congress or eventually fight the battle in court. Joe Biden is expected to formally join the 2020 presidential race next week. People close to the former vice president say even though he's pushed his own deadline back a few times, he's ready to make his candidacy official. Biden has been in hot water recently after two women accused him of unwanted touching. He released a video promising to be more respectful of personal space. Biden began his political career in 1972 after winning a seat in the Senate at 29 years old. He was reelected six times before becoming the 47th U.S. Vice President. He joins a crowded field of Democratic candidates hoping to unseat President Donald Trump. Thousands of bees that live on the roof of Notre Dame are alive and buzzing. Notre Dame housed three beehives just beneath the rose window since 2013. They moved in as part of an effort to fight bee die-off. Each hive has about 60,000 bees. The cathedral's beekeeper says Monday's devastating fire did not harm the bees because they are below the main roof where the fire spread. The beekeeper says he will not know for certain if the bees survived until he can go up and inspect the hives, but he is confident the hives did not burn because bees were spotted flying in and out. Straight ahead on First at Four, a Columbine survivor shares his story of the deadly school shooting and how he copes with the massacre 20 years later. Rainy weather continues, but for how long? We'll break down that full forecast in just a few short minutes. 